Welcome to Seek Reality. I'm Roberta Grimes, and I'm so happy you're with us today. Seek Reality began 10 years ago now as just a, an audio podcast that was focused primarily on seeking and finding the truth about the glorious fact that we really do survive our deaths just fine. And for most people, uh, I have just discovered, I mean, I thought that was all we had to do, explain the fact that we do survive our deaths. But for most people, I have just basically discovered that death is still a scary unknown. And I have trouble getting that. I'm amazed to report to you that by recent survey, more than 80% of the people in the world are still afraid to die. So now, of course, we also have SeekReality.com, where for the price of just a sandwich per month, you can feast on the endless truth. And that's one very good way for you to get past your fear of death, but there are other ways. And one very different, very positive approach, I think it's also, as I say, very, very positive approach, is something we're going to talk about today. And we have as our guest, all the way from the United Kingdom to talk about this positive approach of the very delightful Sue Brain. Sue decided when she survived a light plane crash, I mean, imagine surviving a light, light plane crash, something that finally made her face up to her own mortality that she decided she wanted to help other people. To, sur to survive by who had survived their deaths or even were just thinking about the possibility that they might not survive their deaths. She wanted to help them face up to their mortality in a positive way. So for the past 20 years, she's been doing that. She's been helping people to sort of transform their relationship with death through end of life research, workshops, and her books on spirituality, consciousness, and death and dying. Sue Brain has an MA in the Rhetoric and Rituals of Death. She has a second MA in Creative Writing. For many years, she worked as a therapist specializing in trauma, end-of-life issues, bereavement, and grief. She currently hosts death cafes, and she focuses on her work as a writer, speaker, and facilitator. And the, over the past few years, Sue Brain has become increasingly aware of the shifts and changes that are happening to our planet. This prompted her to write her latest book, which is called Living Fully and Sue. Hold up your book. Living okay. <laughs> Dying Consciously, The Path to Spiritual Well-Being. She posts an In Conversation with Sue blog, which focuses on how to live consciously for a better world. And she's even set up the Facebook community called Page, Page which is called Living Consciously for a Better World. She's with us today for the third time and all the way from, you know, across what they call the pond, which is a little bit bigger than a pond. Sue, welcome once again. It's lovely to have you back with us for the third time. Oh, it's just lovely to be here with you again, Roberta. It's like coming home. <laughs> <laughs> it is. We are. It is a small world we're discovering with, yeah. with the wonders of Zoom. But let's now talk a little bit about what it was that finally made you decide it was time to do this and kind of make the focus of your life teaching people about what comes after this part of life. Yeah, it's just, I, I think even as a child, I knew I was going to die. You know, I've, it's, I've always, I was always, always been aware of my mortality right from a very, very small child. It's just been part of my consciousness, really. But the big shift happened for me um, when I survived the plane crash and it just brought me up really short about sitting beside the wreckage of the plane and that both the pilot and I had survived. Uh, goodness knows how we did because the plane was a complete write-off, but we did. Um, and well, did you know just, you, he, he was trying to land the plane and it just... Oh yeah, he was a pilot. Yeah. I mean, we were... 1500 feet up and then the propeller just stopped going round and basically we fell out of the sky wow. um but what happened for us is that we were he was i mean he was brilliant because he was jettisoning the fuel as we were coming down sending out mayday calls and i just went into oh my god this is it this is so i started saying goodbye to everybody in my head and then um we were coming into he was trying to get into a field to land but there was a row of trees in front of us and we just hit the trees and 
that mm-hmm. span us down and splatted us onto the ground. Um, yeah, and 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 the the plane plane just disintegrated around us because it was a little Cessna, so they kind of made of balsa wood, really. Um, but it was sitting oh, beside us. And I just suddenly, I had this massive realization, like um, I was living a very, very hedonistic lifestyle at the time. And I didn't know, I, I, I would just, I was just on the wrong path. And I just had this overwhelming understanding that if I didn't do something to change my life, it would have been better to have died. It was such a powerful thing. And that just completely catapulted me onto my healing journey. And that then led me to uh, all sorts of serendipitous and coincidences started happening around that time. And it was just like the universe went, oh, great. We've got her attention. Right. Let's do got something. Her attention. It does yeah. do that. It focuses. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It, it certainly did for me. And I met, started meeting new people. And then somebody introduced me to the work of Elizabeth Cooper Ross. And then I went and I, and I just got on a plane and went to America because I knew, I just knew I had to go and do her training. And so I, I did the training, which was the life, death and transition uh, facilitator with the with Elizabeth Cooper Ross organization. And that was just so profound. It was such a powerful understanding that there was something so much more than just me here. Um, and I learned a lot about, you know, that, that how if we don't, If we don't open up to our spiritual quadrant, she talks about the four quadrant, the physical, the emotional and the mental. But if we don't open up to the fourth quadrant, which is spiritual, we're like a table with three legs. We are not stable. And whether you call that religious belief or or spiritual belief, for me, it's spiritual spiritual belief. Um, And and that was that was just like, oh, you know, that's what I've been missing all my life and that's what up until that moment and that just started me off on this massive journey to back to who I truly was and through that um and I I mean I did everything from shamanism to oh god I mean no stone (laughs) hunter trained as a, 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 a psychotherapist as part of my own healing journey and got very involved in trauma and understanding that you know when we're deeply traumatized it's very hard for us to to connect with with who we truly are um only because of my own trauma I, I i just i didn't i had no idea why life was so hard until i started this journey and then the sort of the layers of realization just started to unfold and i love the way a lot of um spiritual teachers talk about you know the you know finding out who you are is stripping away the layers of the onion and there's always another layer. There's always another layer to strip off. We're always going back. Who am I? And you think you're, you've are you gone back to who you truly are. No, no, there's more. There's more. So there's it's just this amazing more. journey, really, Roberta, that I I just found it. I find it. It's just it's just everything to me. Finding out about the human condition and my own journey of the human condition. It really is remarkable. When you begin your spiritual journey, it's Mm. like your whole life really opens up. It's almost as like, as if your true life really begins. The the other thing for me, it opened me up to the magic of being alive. And I, you know, I I, I stopped, I, I came off the hamster wheel and, you know, all the greasy pole stuff. Does it the hamster matter? wheel. Yes. Does it matter? Yeah, and I just think this that there is this magic, and I just think the universe for me is absolutely alive, and it speaks to me and helps me, and, you know, it, it sort of guides me along my way all the time. Yes. And it's uh, my job to turn to the universe and work with it. Oh, That's how yes. It. Yes. Mm. And And isn't that wonderful? And so then you started thinking about how can I help other people begin this journey? Well, I had a massive, I had a major um, mystical experience that again was, this was after the plane crash, a couple of years after. And um, 
I know this sounds bizarre, but this is what happened. I was sitting yeah. on a train yeah. and um, it felt like the curtains of my forehead parted and suddenly I was, everything disappeared and I, I was floating up into this. I've never experienced love like it. It was, I, I don't have the language to describe it. And I sense it, this, it was very telepathic, this, this presence beside me, this utter loving presence and there was no judgment there was it was just there was love but it wasn't the love the human love that we understand which is always conditional this right. just went beyond it and it was just the most amazing experience and I had and and this presence just communicated to me just said look you know life is only an experience that's all it is and it was just like of course and it, so that was massively life changing for me. Again, yes. as soon as I got the teaching, it was like you know the the, the curtains closed, and I was back on the train going, "What was that? <laughs> <laughs> what?" So I talk yeah, a lot wonderful. about oh, wonderful. Um, mystical experiences being in the most prosaic of situations. You can have it. You can have one walking down the street. You can have one doing the yarning. You just you can need have to be open to the possibility. Yes. Of it. That's it. Yes. Yeah. I don't know why it happened. I have no idea. You I've were never open to something. it. That's why. I don't I wasn't open. even aware that I was, but it ha that's what happened for me. And then I started doing a lot of research into end of life experiences and near death experiences. And when I started reading a lot about near-death experiences, I realized the people that die and then they come back and they tell their story, talk about this love, this love they can't put into words. And it's the same, I felt I had the same experience. It wasn't a near-death experience. It was a mystical experience, but it's the same Let's love. Let's talk about NDEs because you brought them up. Yes. People who are here to tell us what happened to them never have actually died. Death is a different experience from an NDE. People who have had an NDE have gone to the astral plane, which is where all of or us- wherever. Are. Yeah. I mean, right. you could say that or wherever. That's our yeah. true eternal yeah. home, yeah. actually. Mm. But what happens then is their silver cord has not been severed. Therefore, they can come back. During a during an NDE that is extensive, people will often come to a place where they're told, "Go back," because yes. if you don't go back, you have a, you're approaching well, where the dead actually are. And if you, oh my, my I, 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 I put my cat in this room so my can do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you you're approaching where the dead actually are, and if you continue, your silver cord will sever, and you will not be able to go back. And therefore, I, 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 Roberta, I don't know about that. I, I don't because I, I really don't know about that. But all I know is that people and I've done a lot of study into this have extraordinary experiences. They and do they, in the astral. Are, and are, it's a very love filled place. It, people have to believe people believe they've died because it's so different from here. Yeah. That's the thing you've had. I, I The reason I'm saying this is for people who are watching and who don't know this, we always pause when we're doing um, these podcasts and these videos to make sure people watching understand that there is a difference. And yeah. if, if you're talking to someone who has had an NDE and they say they've died, always gently remind them that they haven't actually died because if they had died, they wouldn't be able to come back and talk about it. But a lot of people come back because they've been, they have a mission. And I mean, I think the most... Yes. They, they just their silver cord hasn't been severed, fortunately, yeah. so they can come and tell us about their wonderful experience in the astral plane, which is I great. Think, yeah, even Alexander, who is one of the most convincing stories I've ever ha heard, he's a doctor. Yes, beautiful experience and, in the astral book, plane. You had yes. um, proof of heaven. I've met him. Uh, lovely. He's he's lovely. very convincing, and he had a beautiful experience. Some mm. people have awful experiences because their spirit guides are trying to shape them up. And they have, they even believed they went, they were in hell. All they had to say was, help, 
I'm in hell. And mm -hmm. immediately they were out of that experience because they were shaped up by their spirit guide who gave them. I haven't, I've experience. not experienced that myself. I've not experienced that. No, which is a good thing. It's pretty scary. Experiences like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we all have our own experience, don't we, about yes, what it is. Totally. It but comes it, from our spirit guide. Yeah. Yeah. I've 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 I'm so convinced. I've I've read so many stories now. I've interviewed so many people about near death experiences yes. and end of life experiences. Me, me too. I it, it's, they're wonderful convinced. experiences that are given yeah, to us life by our continues spirit guides. after yeah. we die. I'm convinced of it. Yeah. I don't even believe it. I'm convinced of it. Yeah. I mean, they're very helpful. They didn't come to us until the, the first book about NDEs was in 1976. I had already convinced Raymond myself. Moody. Yes, Raymond Moody. Um, I had already done my, my early research into the afterlife, which was done in the wonderful experiences that were received in the first part of the 20th century and that 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 was the the great period of the um, um deep trance mediums the great deep trance mediums um in the late 19th early 20th century and there were wonderful books that you could buy in you know for a few pennies in in used bookstores back when I was first doing my research right out of college. And um, I had convinced myself with two years of reading those books that of course life continues. It was impossible for it not to be true because these, these mediums were working in the Southern US and in, in, the, in London and in the in environs in your yeah. part of the world. Oh yeah. And guess what? All the experiences were the same. I read hundreds of accounts, my dear, and they were having the same experiences, but there were no duplicate reports. How is it possible that the same details, the same process, mm -hmm. the same you know details of what was happening to these people after their deaths? It was all identical in hundreds of experiences. Now, it's interesting the stories. It is. It, it, you and, know, and and it's it's impossible more... for it to be all the same if it's not real. So I was convinced. I, I it was the it biggest skeptic in the world. Mm. I but find it, it very interesting real. now that that um, a lot of there's a there's a the the the, the it's the noetic the the University of Noetic Sciences. They're doing a huge amount of research now into mediumship and into consciousness and into telepathy and what it yes. is. And I yeah. find that fascinating and how it's yeah. feeding it to a different perception of what life, the, the cycle of life and death and what is death? Is it actually a birth into a different, it, it, into a different form of being? And this, I feel like it really feeds into the Buddhist belief that, you know, when we die, the personality um, it, it, this is Buddhist. The personality dies, but there is a um, that we we there's an essence of us that continues into the stream of consciousness, and then it, they believe in reincarnation that it comes back. Not everybody does, but there's certainly this this sense of that that we continue after. Of course, the physical we do. There's no died. there's no question. I mean, um, the, the the stories that that the people who uh, were, were, were meeting with, literally do it through these deep trans mediums, were meeting with their um, uh, loved ones. Um, in, in, and, and there were people in the room who were recording all of these meetings. It was just unbelievable mm -hmm. what was happening mm -hmm. you know, in, the, in, the, in the 1910s, 1920s. And it was yeah. all being recorded because they all believed that the science was going to, at that time, scientists would, would be investigating all of these accounts. So that was when they thought science would wake up. But of course, what they did instead was to adopt materialism as a fundamental mm. scientific dogma. And they still hold to that dogma to this it's day. Changing. It is changing, Roberta. There's a lot of research now being done into end of life experiences, particularly the whole dying experience and how people are, um, there's a lot of evidence now of people, the dying, not doesn't happen to everyone, but it certainly happens to a large proportion of people that they, 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 
they see inverted commas um somebody who um peter and i used to call them yes. takeaway peter Fennick and i are do, people are doing that research but mainstream yes. science you will not see those reports in popular science magazines mainstream they are beginning they are beginning stiff. to come out it's i we i take those magazines i yeah. still don't mm. report it in those magazines they are still stonewalling the truth mm. to mm. this day to this minute mark the date you, they still don't because we take those magazines yeah well we did they're we, on my coffee table we we um uh we wrote six um academic papers and they did get published in mag in, in in academic journals which is great that's um, the start um, yeah but we it's not about... being it's still not it's yeah. <laughs> the, the the people the creationist scientists are all over it which is beautiful the the, the people who are working for for uh the uh for the the christian the, the the so Christ they're not Christian scientists the the religion Christian science but but the the ones who are are um, basically working under the auspices of um, the they're they're basically trying to prove that you know that Jesus was real they're investigating the shroud of Turin all of that that sort of kind kind of of of, of Christian scientists mm -hmm. they're all over that. And oh yes, there is abundant scientific mm. proof of the whole mm. process that you and I study about what happens mm. at and after death. That's there's abundant mm. proof that it's all real. That at deathbed visitors are real. That the whole process of death is real. It's beautiful. I what don't think of it. I don't think it matters if it's real or it's subjective. What what matters is objectively real. The, the the dying person has that experience yes. it's real to them and it helps them to let go and that's oh, yeah. what matters they die much more at peace and it also helps the relatives i've had spoken to a lot of relatives who um who say oh do you know I, when my dad or my mum talked about you know great auntie martha coming to visit them i just felt oh that's wonderful they're not dying alone there's somebody with them and it really it helped wonderful? them in their oh grieving my... process so it's it's a very oh, beautiful, beautiful loving yes. process that can go on yes yes you know, and Raymond is is right again writing books about it. At the deathbed, yeah. visitors came. They went part. You know, they even sometimes went out of their bodies part of the way with the with, with the person who has died. Oh, such beautiful, beautiful stories we're hearing about what happened, and we've got terminal lucidity, and that's being studied. Oh, yes, so exciting, my dear. How beautiful all of this is! What a wonderful time for us to be able to teach all of this. Well, I think it's just about sharing stories, and that's what the death cafes enable people to do. They yeah, enable talk about death cafes. Tell people what that oh, is okay. all about. Okay, so I don't know if you've got them in the states. You must have, but um, I don't know. It, I, I'm not part of it, so I'm excited to have you. Oh, talk okay. About so are. the death cafe movement was started by John Underwood back in 2011, and he he just had this vision. He was a Buddhist, and he just wanted to help us all to talk better about death and dying. So he's, he was the first one in the UK to start up a death cafe, which he did with his mum, who she was a, um, a psychotherapist. And they started it, the first one in her house in London. And he just brought people together to talk about death. That was all. There's no, there's no teaching. There's no, there's nothing. It's just take your label off show up as a human being and let's talk about what's really important let's talk about death and dying and they are the most amazing spaces to explore your relationship with death and to share your stories with other people who also have shown up to do the same thing so there's no shutting down or oh, don't don't talk about this morbid or why are you saying that you know it's none of that it's just absolutely everybody shows up to it to share their stories and their their belief systems and their fears even about death and dying and when they've done that when they've had their their when they've heard each other when they've come together and they've had that conversation 
they just go away. You can see people's faces transforming. It's it's the most wonderful thing. Fascinating. Yeah. So it really helps them to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's the, the Death Cafe movement basically started from this one meeting in London and it's internationalized right across across the world. Um, and anybody, anybody can start up a death cafe. You've just got to sign up. And if you just go on to if you want to do that, sign up and you go deathcafe.com, deathcafe.com. That's the website. And there's a whole it's guidance. There's no rules. They only thing that they ask you not to do is not to sell any products and to own your story that's that's the only thing it's not there as a sales thing or to push your belief system it's there as a as a conversation about let's share our experiences together about end of life and death and dying so amazing stories come to the death cafe and people will often say, I have never spoken about this before. I've never had, I've never known where to take this story or I've never, I've, I've always felt embarrassed to say that I had this mystical experience or this is what happened when I was sitting beside my mum. And I thought, you know, and I didn't Great want to say. to share those stories, sure. Yeah. This is so fascinating to me. But, but really, Sue, because... Craig and I have always, Craig Hogan is sort of my partner in doing this work. We've always thought the only way to help people is for them to know the whole truth. Because, I mean, I'm totally unafraid to die. I, I, I've i always, I, I think after I had my experience of light when I was eight years old, um, I, I always knew that there's something eternal going on. But I still was a little bit afraid until I spent those two years researching uh, all that old evidence and then after those two years I said it's obvious that life goes on and I never was afraid after that but Craig also has done a tremendous amount of research and we always felt that the only way really to get rid of the fear of death was to put all the evidence in one place and give people full access to it and mm -hmm. and it takes really we thought it, we just have to overwhelm people with the evidence. And so we have seekreality.com. We teach people. And and when people, people have told us it takes, you know, you have to really immerse yourself. People who've been through our system say, yeah, after a year or two, I'm, I, I was never afraid again. I get it. I totally get it. You're right. And, and then they go on happily with their lives and they communicate with us every so often. So we always felt that was the only way to do it. And mm. so you just have a whole different way to do it. And they don't have to understand that their life is eternal hundred percent. In my experience, I mean, when you're learning, it's a different way to do it. I, you have to, it, it, I think it's, you can be taught, you can be told anything, but it's about, isn't it? It's about, you're only ready to take it on board when you're ready. And that can be mean that you're very young and you get it and you just go, no, I'm, I, I get this. And some people, you know, they're on the deathbeds and they get some it. Some people are not ready. You're right. Just, they, they, it, it, maybe maybe they go to a much. death cafe and yeah. they say, okay, maybe I'm ready to go yeah. to seek reality now and really immerse myself in it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not ready yet. I'm going to go to a death cafe and nibble at it. And then and, later or, on. or just share the sto their story. I think right. that's for me. It's about being heard, isn't it? It's this sense yeah. of other people listening to you and just going, "Yeah," rather than being closed down or or or. And what you I love about that is there's right. no teaching. There's not. There's no. I just very very gently hold the space for any any conversation to arise. As long as it's to do with end of life and death and dying, right, right, and and, and the model is it's an it's two, a two hour conversation. So I run them on Zoom, and I also run them. Well, I used to run them in person. I run them on Zoom, and it's just this. You can just see the relief of people going, "God, I'm actually it's okay to say this." You know, I'm not crazy no, or I, no. you know, I've had this very weird experience. My grandfather died and I, I, you know, he visited me and on the, at the moment of his death, I felt him sitting on the bed beside me or, 
you know, I felt or the phone rang or all these weird experiences that can happen, these coincidences that can happen. And and I've never said this yeah. before, but this is what happened. And I I, and I get the emails. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I don't lovely. do cafes, but I, I sort of am a death cafe because I, I yeah. at the end of these podcasts, I always invite emails. And so I get them fairly frequently from people who will yeah. say, this happened to me. Am I crazy? Because basically they say there's some variation of that. And they say, no, you're not crazy. This happens a lot to people yeah. that they they get that phone call or uh, and no one's there or they get that phone call and someone was there and it's mom who says I'm fine or whatever. Um, yeah. And, and, or or uh, something, they, the phone, it's sort of like that, the moment of death and they know that person's dying and they may be, they may be in a, Australia and then they know they kind of they feel yes. like they've been visited totally told yeah, and then exactly. the phone goes half an hour later to tell them they've died at the time this person right. has visited you know or, or the person literally appears and usually Sometimes. they're just high Sometimes. and you know it was mom and she was smiling I didn't she didn't speak I, yeah. I just saw her face and yeah. it was that was I crazy no that's common it happens a lot. It, it is common. That's the whole point. It's common, yes. and I think you know it isn't unusual to. Ha it's it's not unusual to have a mystical experience like I did. It's not unusual. We think yes. it is, but it isn't. And if we can just open up to this something more than just me, they need a place to say that. And so that's what your death cafe really is. I, I just think it, it, to I, say I, that. when God walks into the room, I there's, so, there, there's something happens in a death cafe that is, it's magical. It's just delightfully magical. That's, that's all I can say. There's something else happens when people are talking about something that's about so profound about the human condition. Now, now give, give me a please again. It's Death Cafe. It's it's www.deathcafe.com. And anybody can run a death cafe, but it, if you want to do it, that's great. But do look at the at, read the um criteria first on the deathcafe.com website. Okay. There's a it's very clear the structure of the death cafe. It's not, it's really important to understand this is not a teaching thing. It's a facilitation of a, a space yeah. that anybody can come and talk about end of life in any way they want to. There's no pushing of any belief systems or anything like it. It's just, this is what I believe. And somebody might say, well, actually, this is what I believe. No right, no wrong. That's just the conversation. Hmm. But if you've had experiences that you wish you could share with someone, what a great place to get validated that other people may have yeah. had similar experiences and you can, yeah. I, I think that's a great thing. That's really great. Yeah. I never really understood what they were. I've heard of them, of course. And, and uh, so that's great. That's a great mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I read your, your book. I think your book is delightful and uh, it's not too long. We all love shorter books. <laughs> <laughs> um and and uh it's a it's a great place to um kind of also sort of get some of your beliefs and and experiences a little bit validated so that you can begin to grow and and grow into that space um my book my first book in this space was the fun of dying which is a very good book to read if you're in a crisis situation um especially because um people who suddenly need to know, learn a lot about uh death uh, tell me that they read it and it kind of made so much sense to them quickly which they needed suddenly they had someone who was dying and they needed to understand a lot of stuff quickly the fun of dying is very good for that and it has mm -hmm. enough background information that you can read later that uh, that that helps you uh, to to fill in that space too, but there are a lot of good books. There's a lot of good information um, yeah. that the, in this field you don't need to be ignorant about death, and you certainly should not be ignorant about death. 
Um, mm. I think I have been deficient in teaching about death just because it's an area where, since I don't have any fear at all, mm. I forget. Um, people might be interested i did a tedx talk about wearing your mortality with pride and you can if you look me up sue brain um on the ted it's tedx tedx talks um that might also be something that people might be interested in is is just looking at the importance of living until we die um that death is you know um you know let's mortality isn't about death it's about actually it's about life so, as I said, people might be interested in, in listening. It's only 12 minutes long or something, 12, 14 minutes long. And her, her last name is spelled B-R-A-Y-N-E. <laughs> Good to know. B-R-A-Y-N-E, yes. And, and, her, <laughs> and that's her website, too, Sue Brain, B-R-A-Y-N-E dot com. Uh, dot, is it, I have C-O. Yes, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, sorry. It's, it's my, 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 um. My my website is suebrain.co.uk. Um, yeah. All of this will be, um, by the way, with with the materials for this episode, so that you don't have to um, worry and you know drive off the road as you listen. Um, I always worry about that. So this will all be with the materials with this for this episode, um, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, well, we're coming toward the end of our time. What do you want people to know based on what we've said today? Because we've talked about a lot of things. What do you want people most to know about death and what to think about? Mm, I, 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 I first want to say something. I didn't know how many people are still afraid of death. This is something mm. you deal with, but I haven't been dealing with it very well. Um. What I would say to anybody these days is just find ways to embrace your mortality. You know, you are going to die. There's, that is guaranteed. You were born and you are going to die. And we never know when that's going to happen. When the clock runs out, that's your time. So, you know, it's just about making the very best of the time that you have. And if you're struggling, please find help. That's all you need to do is reach out. There will be somebody there for you to help you along your journey. But I say that to everybody now is just embrace your mortality and just live the best, the best you possibly can with who you are and your, the circumstances that you find yourself in. And I just give grateful thanks every day, every day. You give thanks for what? For each just, moment of just, life or just being here waking up in the morning not being in pain or you know the fact i'm in a warm bed i have you know my house um my age <laughs> i've just turned 70 you know that kind of thing i'm just so grateful just to be to have this time to be conscious of being so alive especially in these times of monumental change across the planet and we don't know how that's going to unfold we don't but you know it's it, and it's be about being as present as we possibly can be and i just believe in feeding the zeitgeist with as much positivity as i possibly can um and that i feel is my job is to is to age and die as well as i can and to die for, i want to die consciously i want to be really present when i die so that's my, I look at that as my, that my next step, my next dying, this is, you know, I've tipped, I've gone down the, I'm going down the slopey hill <laughs> towards, but for me, it's like another adventure. It isn't, a, a, it isn't an ending for me. That's what I believe. It's a, another amazing adventure that I'm going to be stepping into when my time comes. Beautifully said. Thank you so much for being with us, my dear. So happy to have you here and we'll have you back. And I think you're now going to be our expert on this since I'm a pretty <laughs> lousy expert on death. Uh, it's something I'm, I never think about. I'm not familiar with. Um, I'm, um, I, I think about life all the time, <laughs> but I never think about death and I don't teach about it. I should. I really should. And I appreciate very much your, your looking at that side of it for me. Thank you. 
big hug. And everyone, again, we've come to the end of our time. This has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. I'm so happy you could be with us today. Please never forget, you are a powerful, eternal being. You never began, you never will end. And when you really get what that means, it changes everything, everything in your life for the better. Next week, our guests will be Carol and Mikey Morgan, and they're going to be with us for the 21st time. I think by now, most people who have, are used to seek reality as part of your lives know Mikey's story. He's a genuine sixth level being who last lived on Earth in the 1600s, and he became so concerned about the way things are going on Earth, pretty, pretty awkwardly, I think, at this point. He took a, a voluntary voluntary, completely optional Earth lifetime, and he became a hero by doing it, that ended in 2007 when he was only 20. So he could teach us and answer our questions with the help of his mother, Carol. And when I first heard Mikey's story in 2011, I did not believe him for one minute. No siree. I have tested Mikey, though, exhaustively over the past dozen years and through hundreds of questions, he's never made a single mistake. In fact, he often, when he answers my questions, takes me a little bit farther and answers some question I wasn't sure about the answer to. He clearly knows a lot more than I do. And I have spent 50 years researching the afterlife. So we are just delight, delighted. And I have to say we are highly honored to have Mikey as our Seek Reality guest fairly often now. I don't believe, I'm amazed that he is willing to come and be our guest repeatedly. And whenever you think of a question you'd like to ask, ask Mikey, you just send it to me through the green contact block. And as I say, I am honored that Mikey is willing to come and answer his questions here. Again, he will be with us next week. Sooner or later, he'll find a bigger venue. But until then, he is willing to come and be our guest. Please be sure to join us next week. These visits from Carol and Mikey are always a lot of fun. I He, he laughs with us. But this every time he comes and acts like a, a little kid, he just to understand, this is a very, very big star. Once I asked Thomas... How far above him, and he's a fifth level being, Mikey actually is. And he said, well, where I'm standing right about now in the afterlife, I can look up and I can see a star far above me. And that's about where Mikey is. So I have to tell you, I'm kind of amazed. He's still willing to talk to us. <clears throat> this week, Sue Brain has been with us for the third time. Sue has an MA in the Rhetoric and Rituals of Death. She hosts several death cafes each year. Now I know what a death cafe is. I think it's a great thing. Her most recent book is Living Fully, Dying Consciously, The Path to Spiritual Well-Being. And we don't talk much about the D word here on Seek Reality, but we should. Because at this point, death is such a natural and joyous continuation of this life for me that I just assume that everyone must see it as I do. But apparently I'm wrong about that. So today, Sue Brain has helped to take us back to where our seek reality roots are 10 years ago. For those who still see death as in any way fearful, I've been talking here with a, a, someone who really knows what she's talking about. And we're very grateful to her for helping us with that. I think that I, I was thinking as she was giving her, she was giving us her what she's grateful for and what am I grateful for? Um, what I'm most grateful for is the opportunity, the wonderful opportunity to give you what I've been given, which is the, the right, the joy to give you each week what God has given me the opportunity to do, which is to answer the questions I've, been, I've spent my life asking him and he's given me those answers directly through the lord the given the risen christ and i am giving you as truly as i possibly can the answers that jesus has given me and every answer that i give you is an answer that jesus has given me directly and that's what i'm most grateful for
And one thing I should perhaps mention to you now is that after 10 years of my saying that Super Reality is only audio because your host, as you can see, has a great face for radio, this is our second Seek Reality audio and video podcast, and we have bowed to the inevitable yes and joined the modern era, and I promise to try to grow old, at least somewhat presentably. I actually have put on lipstick and combed my hair, and now, of course, it's also time once again to mention that Seek Reality Online is your one-stop resource for all things afterlife. Just go to seekreality.com and start to learn for yourself that your own reality really, really and truly is eternal. Learn the ultimate truth from Craig Hogan, who is your ultimate worldwide expert. I'm not. He is on all things afterlife. And teachingsbyjesus.com is its new sister website and your single resource for all the beautiful divine truths that are brought to us in perfect love by the greatest teacher of all, Master Jesus, the eternally risen Christ. Now it really is Jesus's turn. Christianity, the religion that was created by the Roman Emperor Constantine and not by Jesus, finally is dying. So the genuine teachings of Jesus can at last come alive. Teachingsbyjesus.com is the Lord's own entirely religion-free website made by Jesus in perfect love for you. Also, most of you, I think, know by now that my nonfiction books are Liberating Jesus, My Thomas, The Fun of Dying, The Fun of Staying in Touch, The Fun of Growing Forever, The Fun of Living Together, and The Fun of Loving Jesus, Embracing the Christianity that Jesus Taught. It's about time. For young children, there's The Fun of Meeting Jesus, and you can order all these books through bookstores or on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and most of all, the, the adult books are also available as audiobooks, all but the last one, and I'm, I'll get around to doing that one too. If you want to talk about anything at all, just contact me through the green contact block on robertagrimes.com. I do answer every email, but I get so many that it can take me a couple of weeks at this point. Just please give give me your correct email address, because if you don't, um, you're never going to get an answer, because something, sometimes my emails bounce I'll try twice, but if you truly give me your wrong email address, you'll never get an answer. I'm so sorry. All of the more than 500 past episodes of Seek Reality and Audio are available to you wherever audio podcasts can be found, and you can listen to new episodes in audio each week with the Seek Reality app that you can find for free wherever apps are available. And meanwhile, this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Please enjoy and make the most of this coming week in our one, one sacred reality, always knowing that you are a powerful, eternal being, and you, most of all, in this whole universe, you are infinitely, eternally, and perfectly loved. <laughs>